All right, good Saturday evening, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. It is the second to last weekend of October, and things are quiet, dry, and pretty mild out there for the most part for this evening. But we do have some more concerns coming our direction. We'll be talking a little bit more about that coming up here in just a little bit. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. This is the News Channel 3 Weather Center that you see behind us. And as of right now, again, we see some fairly quiet conditions for the time being. But overnight, could be looking at a few more more rumbles of thunder heading our general direction. We'll be talking a little bit more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Again, if you've never been here before, <clears throat> excuse me, forecast information available here. And again, don't forget about our main web page available at wreg.com slash weather. News Channel 3's home on the World Wide Web. Great opportunity to keep up to date on the forecast in and around here. We'll also be posting the replay of this coming up a little bit later on. So this will be available here as well as in, let me see, these right here. Kind of hard to point this direction with this camera. But again, you can find out more information at any of these social media websites. And very glad to have you along for the ride. So thanks for sticking around for all of this. We'll continue to keep you updated on things throughout the rest of the weekend, but let's go ahead and take a look and see what's going on out there. Welcoming all of our friends on Facebook this evening. Cliff Jackson, thanks for showing up there. Uh, currently, no one, well, a couple people there for a second on Periscope, but otherwise not doing too bad for right now. We continue again to see the possibility of some more areas of showers and thunderstorms later, but as of right now, Germantown camera is fairly quiet, if not a little bit on the cloudy side out there for this evening. Evening. More of our weather bug cameras easily available. Go to wreg.com slash webcams for more. Currently on the radar, we don't have a lot going on directly in the Mid-South area. Back toward around Memphis, things are very much on the quiet side and will continue to be so throughout the next about maybe couple of hours through News Channel 3 at 10. We are watching down to the south of us and we do have some more areas of showers developing. Friars Point down to Duncan, Alligator in Mississippi, and just across the river to Lakeview in in Phillips County in Arkansas. We are seeing again some scattered showers taking place here. We're not getting a lot of lightning from these thunderstorms. We could be seeing some more activity coming up within the course of about the next couple of hours. I'm going to switch over to Little Rock radar here real quick and see if they have a better view. There's some more of those thunderstorms taking place down around the uh, triple border, Arkansas, Louisiana, and into and around portions of West Central Mississippi at this point in time. So we do still have, again, some more thunderstorms taking place, and we'll see more like that coming up throughout the rest of the evening. Now, these so far are not severe, so good news on that. But once again, we could be looking for more activity a little bit later on. Let's go down to Jackson and see if we have anything else. There's a better view as to what's going on. Again, the only thunderstorms that we will really have are back down to around the area close to Chico, Ashley counties in Arkansas and right across the river to southern Washington County. Sunflower County going to be picking up some of those scattered showers here pretty soon and some of those thunderstorms there. Now these earlier showers that we had in the Mid-South making their way back up a little bit closer to us. Uh, let's go terminal radar on Memphis. Uh, not much showing up there. Let's go ahead and go back to the uh, current page. Much of what you're seeing here from Memphis radar. Most of this was thunderstorms not more than about a couple of hours ago. So we are seeing some dwindling taking place, but more showers for, say, Helena, West Helena, Clarksdale, uh, west of I-55 for the most part, Jonestown, Mississippi, Elaine in Arkansas, Shelby in Tennessee. Anything west of I-55 could be picking up more of this activity within the course of the next couple of hours. So once again, this is something that we'll be uh, keeping a very close eye on as we go into the rest of the next few hours and also into overnight. Now would be a good time to get your weather radio ready to go just to be on the safe side to make certain that you've got enough uh, ready uh, do, again for communications purposes. Don't rely, don't ever rely on just one bit of information. Have uh, numerous ways to get information when it comes to weather. Great opportunity to make certain you stay safe out there. So that's what we want to make certain everybody is uh, doing so out there. Welcome to everybody on Periscope Twitter and also on Facebook Alice McGowey from Wyatt, Mississippi. Kathleen Towell, thanks for joining us. 
Uh, Kenneth Colston, how much rain is expected? We'll get to that in just a little bit. Doris McMinn Wilson, thanks for joining us. Likewise, Betty Smith, thanks for stopping on by. Delmer Rodriguez, thank you very much for watching tonight, as well as Joe Angela Moses and Cliff Jackson again. Thanks for stopping by. Billy Franklin from just south of Nashville for this evening. Let's go ahead and get started and show you more about what's going on, uh, where it comes to what's happening with the forecast. This is kind of interesting taking place. Going to do this. We talked about this this morning. You're looking at the area into and around. Japan. We've got a super typhoon taking place into and around areas just south of Japan. And this thing is a monster. Winds of 155 miles per hour. This thing is going to be coming very close to Tokyo and the east coast of Japan into the next couple of days. But that's not why we're interested in this. Yes, this is fascinating. Yes, it's still tropical storm season. But the the really interesting thing that's going to be going on with this thing is that as long as this hurricane is going to be making its way up the coast of Asia and heading out into the Pacific, this thing is going to have a very interesting effect on our weather as it gets into the jet stream, that river of air that you see going past here that helps to drive the weather around the atmosphere. If you've ever snapped a rope in gym class or uh, workout practice or you've snapped the hose outside when you've been watering the lawn or taking care of you know the garden or whatever, that whip, that snap can cause a loop to happen and in the next several days this is going to develop a big dip into the jet stream. This hurricane is going to develop a big dip and that's going to allow for a lot of very cold air to make its way down from the polar regions and that's going to have an impact on our weather here in the Mid-South over the next several days. Not immediately, but into the next few days. This is what it's going to look like as we go through uh, Sunday with the temperatures only on the display from wxcharts.eu. Uh, looking again some cooler weather thanks in part to the rain that we have out there for the next few days. But notice what goes on into the area around Canada and as that cooler air starts to invade the Mid-South makes that plunge down into the plain states and does a very good job of cooling us off and getting some temperatures back into the 40s at least by the time we hit around say next Sunday evening and very cool Saturday and Sunday coming up next weekend and this could actually be sticking around and quite possibly be giving us a very cool Halloween. So the ghosts and goblins out there, it's a possibility they could use a jacket underneath that Darth Vader or princess costume out there. It may not look exactly what you wanted it to look like, but if it gets that chilly out there, you may have to ward off the chill by just a little bit. So that's something we're going to be looking for into the next couple of days as that cold air dislodged by a hurricane half a world away does a very good job of altering our weather here in the Mid-South. Now those thunderstorms we've been watching over the course of the last couple of hours, again, have been developing mainly back into around Oklahoma and into Kansas, parts of Texas as well. And you can see the tops of those thunderstorms taking place into and around Louisiana, Mississippi, and Arkansas. We're not looking at a lot of them, but again, we are going to be watching to see what else comes through out there. Track these with our interactive radar page. It's available at wreg.com slash weather if you'd like to see more about what it looks like out there and how you can drive this thing around and the information that it provides. It's all available again at wreg.com slash weather. Tons of weather information available here. West, rest of the forecast, again, the possibility of this thunderstorm complex developing tonight, mainly back to our West is going to be the main threat for anything really going on for tonight and into very early tomorrow morning. The storm system rolls our way, so overspreads the Mid-South, possibility of rain and thunderstorms, uh, severe weather at this time. We'll get to that coming up here in just a little bit, but then by the time we hit Monday morning, still sticking around the form of rainfall, so we could see some sloppy commute times out there, which could be a problem, so keep that in mind. And then by Tuesday, everything starts to leave, and some cooler, drier air drops on down from portions of Canada behind that latest cold front, and that'll help to kind of sweep the rainfall out of here and give us a very nice mid-few days across much of the Mid-South area. Now, we are going to be looking for the possibility possibility of some pretty heavy rainfall uh, from this, from the excessive rainfall outlook from the Weather Prediction Center. Great place to go to when you're studying stuff about flash flooding. So Kenneth Colston, uh, what we're going to be looking for is the possibility, marginal to slight risk of maybe some heavier amounts of rainfall taking place 
in and around the Mid-South. So we could be looking at the potential of some flash flooding out there. Doesn't look like a huge thing, but again, it is possible. So we'll be watching that. So keep it tuned to News Channel 3 for more information there. Seven-day hazardous weather outlook from the National Weather Service is again showing a small chance confidence factor is about a two out of five for isolated strong thunderstorms into uh, the area late tonight and through Sunday tomorrow. So as we go toward midweek, the first part of that colder air starts to approach the area, and we could be looking at some patchy frost near the Tennessee River Valley, according to what the National Weather Service is telling us. Lows tonight in the mid to upper 60s. Chances of rain start to move into the Mid-South as we get into late tonight and past midnight will be mainly along and west of the Mississippi River, and that'll be sticking around right into News Channel 3 daybreak starting tomorrow at 6 a.m. Highs tomorrow will be a little bit cooler back in the lower to mid-70s. Winds could pick up by a little bit. Could be seeing some breezy conditions out there, maybe wind gusts of about 10 to 20 miles per hour at times, especially in the morning, so please keep that in mind if you're traveling. Lows tomorrow night, 50s across much of the area, and pretty widespread chances of showers, and quite possibly it looks like some thunderstorms out there as well into Sunday night. Hopefully not seeing too much in the way of problems from rainfall. Monday looks, again, nice where the temperatures are concerned, high 60s to lower 70s, but rainfall chances will be sticking around for much of the Mid-South area. Ruth Wilhoyt Rogel, or Rogel, hope I'm saying that right. Uh, welcome from Decaturville uh, as well. Bethany Bircher, my goddaughter, checking in from Emporia. Uh, that systems, yeah, that's part of the system that is coming this direction here. And ESU football game in a lightning delay. Good to know the officials are keeping track of stuff like that. So uh, kudos to the ESU uh, football officials for making certain everybody stays safe. Don't see a lot of that these days with hundreds of thousands of people at sporting events and the uh, storm just rages overhead and nobody thinks about safety anymore. So looking good that people are taking care of that. Now, Monday night in the Mid-South, back into the 40s and lower 50s and chances of rainfall gone and that's about it. By Tuesday, we're back to sunshine temperatures in the 50s and 60s. Those are the high temperatures for Tuesday, so looking a little bit cooler there. And winds will be solidly out of the north. Tuesday will be breezy. Northwest winds at about 10 to 20 miles per hour, so it could be a little choppy out there. We'll skip ahead to Wednesday. Highs in the 60s across the area. Thursday, high temperatures a little bit warmer back in the 70s. And by Friday, temperatures back in the 60s, even the lower 60s for highs in northeast Arkansas, so not doing too bad there. And by next Friday night, unfortunately, right about the time we get kickoff, showers expected across much of the area. Temperatures will be great for Friday night football, 50s and 60s, but widespread chances of rain out across much of the area, so that could be a problem out there. Now, severe weather for tonight. The main threat will be well back to our west into and around the area for tonight. Oh, my lovely and talented wife, Melissa, checking in for tonight for home. Uh, thank you very much for the handsome comment and cat call back to you at this time. I can't whistle properly when I'm talking 90 miles per hour, but thanks for joining us for this evening. And again, looking at that dark green category over eastern Arkansas, that's the potential for a marginal threat of severe weather. And that, again, could be looking at a uh, possibility of borderline severe weather. Best possibility of that, again, west of the Mississippi, into the Mississippi Valley, that kind of light green shaded area, that is just the possibility of thunderstorms. So kind of a narrow margin there for the possibility of anything involving severe weather, but the main threat is going to be Oklahoma City, north of Dallas, Chanute, Pittsburgh, Kansas, uh, Joplin, Springfield, Missouri, Fort Smith, Fayetteville, Arkansas for that enhanced, that orange area. That's where we're looking again at the best possibility of severe weather tonight. Now, tomorrow's threat of severe weather, as of right now, good news, it's down toward the Gulf of Mexico. We're just not picking up much of anything uh, directly here. That marginal threat for the Crescent City, the mouth of the Mississippi, southern areas of Mississippi, the state, and southwestern areas of the area around Alabama. So we are picking up up again, some activity there in the way of severe weather. We're just going to see the possibility in that light green shaded polygon of just generic thunderstorms, and that's going to be pretty much about it across much of the area. Now, if you would like to check out our forecast, that's available again on our seven-day forecast page at wreg.com slash weather. You can check out more details there. Also available again at various locations online. If you're tuning in on Twitter and Periscope, join me on my Facebook page, that's facebook.com slash austinonic, W-R-E-G-3, 
or just Austin on a WREG at this time. A picture of my daughter playing around with a uh, plasma sphere there at the Pink Palace Museum. Uh, also on Twitter, for those of you tuning in on Twitter tonight, good opportunity again to see a little bit more about what's going on. And thanks to everybody for joining us on Twitter for this evening. Uh, any questions, please feel free to ask what's going on. Love to have your questions out there. And if you have pictures, sunset, sunrise, anything like that, we would love to see more about what you have in mind. If there's something out there that's bothering you or want to know more about the forecast, we would love to know more about things and would love to pass it along to everybody. So please let us know what's happening and send it to us on Twitter. If you have pictures, please pass them along on Instagram as well. That's at Aonic, no underscore necessary, W-R-E-G-3. Got some great pictures for tonight, including a very nice uh, sunrise picture. If I can get this one into view here without messing up the display. Uh, beautiful view from uh, Deborah J54 in and around Humboldt of sunrise from this morning. So a beautiful picture there. And if you have anything out there that you would like to send in, that you would like for us to put on the air, we would love to do it. So please let me know. Just pass them along and we'll do so. Can't get the forecast on air or online, listen to us on the radio, Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3. Would love to have you along for that. And I'll be back on with Bob and Josh Monday morning on Talk Back Live. They'll be switching to a new time in a couple of weeks. We'll talk more about that coming up a little bit later on. That'll do it for tonight's edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. More coming up throughout the course of the rest of the weekend. We'll have an update coming up on News Channel 3 at 10. Kristen Harrelson has more with your all the day's news across the Mid-South, and Glenn Carver has a very busy day, busy weekend in sports coming up, and that's all tonight on News Channel 3 at 10. Thanks for joining us tonight, and stay tuned to News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the weekend for more updates on air and online.